May I now uh, invite uh, call Vice Chair Irina Bukova. Uh, thank you very much, <clears throat> Mr. President. Um, uh, Mr. Slim, uh, my dear colleague uh, Haoling Zhang, Secretary General of the International Telecommunication Union, uh, Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Commissioners, um, allow me uh, first of all to thank our two co-chairs uh, for their commitment, uh, uh, which is a constant support for a journey that we started six years ago, and the strong message of the Secretary General brings me back uh, to the beginning of the Broadband Commission and to what we put as our objective at that time. And I believe now, when we are at the first year of the Agenda 2030, uh, Agenda for the Sustainable Development, uh, I think also the fact that we name our commission, Broadband Commission for Sustainable Digital Development, also reflects uh, uh, the uh, path that we have passed over these years and also our commitment to accompany governments, uh, the civil society, the private sector, uh, in order to achieve what is the main objective of Agenda 2030, leaving no one behind. And I think this is uh, uh, where the uh, broadband, uh, everything that is linked to the new communications uh, uh, technologies is so important. Um, the, and this is why I'm grateful to the Secretary General for reminding us what is the message of the Broadband Commission. It is that the digital revolution should be a developmental revolution. This is that it is a revolution about rights and dignity, and it is about empowering people. It is about empowering every single woman and man. And as this revolution is racing across the world, we see, unfortunately, that divides remain. There are six billion people without high-speed broadband, four billion people uh, with internet access, and two billion people without still a mobile phone. Excess divides are exacerbated by profound divides in skills and competences, and this is also where we should focus more on relevant services, on applications, on content, and I would like to emphasize local and multilingual content. We do not need to remind uh, uh, our commission that innovation lies in access and technology uh, equally, but more in the use to put it by women and men. And also, I would say to the uh, inventiveness, ingenuity, they bring to harness the power to better their lives. And I think this was the message that we brought in 2010, and it was echoed this year in the World Bank's World Development Report, Digital Dividends. The conclusions of the report are clear. Digital adoption is not enough. In the words of the report, to get the most of the digital revolution, countries also need to work on the analog complements. And what they call analog complements include skills, competences, applications, services, and content. And these must cross divides, not deepen them. Unfortunately, I would say, because yesterday we had also the working group on gender digital divide, this is where we are failing, because the gender, di the, the gender digital divide is increasing. New opportunities may be available, but they must be available to all, to empower all, for the benefit of all. Uh, David Nabarro and the Secretary General just mentioned uh, the targets uh, to increase access to information uh, and communication technologies, the SDGs, including universal and affordable access to internet in developing countries to expand education and research, to enhance the use of enabling technologies, especially for women's empowerment, to bolster national science, technology, and innovation capacities. In other words, this is about opening new paths to create and share knowledge. And I would like to commend um, our, one of our co-chairs, uh, Carlos Slim, for this uh, extraordinary initiative. And we did discuss briefly with the President Kagame the uh, need uh, to uh, not just enhance the access, but when it comes to health, education, and culture, to give the opportunity more and more, because we do consider this is a public good uh, in order to give free access uh, to in these, in these areas. 
but it is also about the data revolution, and we know that uh, SDGs is very much about the data revolution. It is about widening learning opportunities. It is about freedom of expression, freedom to create and share knowledge. And it is about developing content that is relevant, local and multilingual, as I already said. So broadband technologies, we know, are a powerful development multiplier, but they have to be accepted also uh, as such. The soft component of this digital revolution can be difficult to put in place, sometimes expensive to establish, sometimes hard to measure, but this should not deter us, because not everything that counts can be counted. And this underpinned UNESCO's contribution to the 2016 State of Broadband Report with a focus on building knowledge cities. I mention this because this year, we have a landmark conference um, Habitat in Quito and uh, the, th the third summit of United Nations Habitat and uh, we believe it is a strategic issue. 70% of the world's population will live in cities over the next 30 years and cities are key to more inclusive, just and sustainable future for all where broadband and ICTs also are essential to transform urban lives to deepen inclusion, to promote education for all, to empower girls and women, and also to sustain cultural heritage and diversity. So now I believe we have uh, transformed the Broadband Commission into a leading global advocacy platform for the transformational power of new technologies for sustainable development. And I would like to thank all of you, uh, first and foremost, our two co-chairs for their leadership, but uh, all of you, because I do believe that we have taken great strides and I'm convinced we can do more to support governments in taking forward this agenda because broadband is uh, an accelerator, the most powerful accelerator of inclusion, of uh, equality, of poverty eradication and sustainability. Thank you.